Okay, um, hello and welcome. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I cannot see the presentation yet. There could be, I mean, I cannot see my own video. Uh, there is probably a delay of about 30 seconds. So uh, could you please <coughs> uh, put pluses in the chat box uh, and say if you can hear and see the presentation. And then we're going to start. So today we're going to talk about academic writing task one. And in particular, we're going to focus our attention on um, describing processes and uh, diagrams. All right. Uh, so, okay, I'm closing all the windows and I only leave this window with a um, with broadcast, with a live stream. Um, okay, I still cannot see your glasses, but I hope that somebody is watching this and the, the recording will, is, okay. Okay, I can, I can hear myself. Um, so it looks like the presentation is going. Um, and okay, could you please put pluses in the chat box and uh, say if you can um, see uh, the presentation? Because I, I can see it, so I believe that you can also do that. Uh, today we'll talk about like uh, the different grammar structures, expressions, and ways to analyze the task. And the example of the task that we're going to deal with today uh, is the tragic story of a life cycle um, of, uh, of silkworm. So um, this, uh, this task is called life cycle of the silkworm and we're going to be, de to be describing it today. But um, uh, just in the very beginning, I want to say a few words about how to describe uh, processes in general. Uh, and uh, so any uh, process consists of an introduction, uh, an overview, and then detailed paragraphs. So uh, when you write your introduction, basically what you need is to paraphrase the task, but sometimes uh, your process can be, uh, well, man-made or artificial, and you can also indicate this in your introduction, or it can be a natural process, yeah? Um, and when you, uh, paraphrase the task. So, for example, our task today uh, about um, silkworm is going to be is going to be like this. So, uh, the task is like this. The diagram below shows the life cycle of the silkworm and the stages of the production of silk cloth. And we will need to uh, paraphrase this kind of thing. Uh, okay. So, J H M. I can hear clearly. Thank you. So um, I, I, I read all your commentaries uh, here, but <coughs> um, there is a delay of 30 seconds. So uh, whenever you write a, do a piece of writing and write it in the chat box, then I will also, um, I will also give you commentaries about it. Okay, so um, yeah. Talking about introduction, I want to give you a few um, expressions that you can use to write uh, your introductions for process descriptions. And you can, you can already um, try to practice them today. So our process today is not very typical. It, can, it consists of two groups of stages. There is life cycle of, uh, of silkworm and then the production of silk cloth. So there are two. But basically when you write your introduction, so how can you say process? You can paraphrase it as the given information or the provided images, and then it shows, represents, illustrates, depicts, or whatever. And then, for example, you can say the pictures illustrate how, let's say, sil silk cloth is manufactured and how, or, 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 and also illustrates this life cycle of a silkworm. Yeah. So the diagram highlights, highlights how uh, silkworm is produced. The pictures show the steps involved in producing silk cloth. The illustration demonstrates, or the diagram illustrates how silkworm is produced, or the given information depicts the stages which are required to do this and that. Okay, so these are uh, the expressions. I will try to copy them now in the chat box because uh, in a second, I will ask you to write your own introduction. Uh, and um, um, so, yeah, these are the expressions. No, I, I can only, uh, I can only uh, have used 200 symbols. Okay, let's do it like this. I'll do it in parts. So this is the first group of expressions, and this is the second one. Okay, so 
there are some possible expressions, but you need to modify them because uh, our um, uh, because uh, our uh, process uh, now uh, is going to consist of two uh, two sub stages. So once again, for those who have just joined uh, today, we're going to be describing. Uh, the life cycle of silkworm, but also it consists of the production of silk cloth. So you can see that uh, we'll, we'll do the overview later, but you can see that the rest are some stages with number one, when a female moth lays its eggs and after 10 days, there are sil silkworm larvae, they feed on mulberry leaf, four to six weeks later, um, there, you can see that there's silk thread and larva are covered and cocoon is formed and then it, uh, the moth hatches, but uh, this he, and here's here's uh, the tragic story of um, the silkworm is that uh, in the penultimate stage um, this process is interrupted and uh, the cocoon is taken and is put, is placed into hot boiling water and then something is done about it. Um, right and we're going to describe all these all these cruel things happening. So. Um, the first thing that I would uh, like to ask you to do, I'll give you two minutes, and can you please try to paraphrase um, the introduction? So, um, and write it in your own words. If you want, you can use the expressions, you can borrow the expressions which I just copied in the chat box. If you like them, you can use them, but uh, please remember that we have here the life cycle of the silkworm as well as production of silk cloth. So there are two kind of well, two, two groups of stages or even two separate processes. Okay, I'll give you two minutes. I'll also set a timer. Um, and please uh, try, to, um, uh, try to paraphrase the task and write your introduction in the chat box. Okay, two minutes. Okay, there is one minute left. Okay, so Alexander, uh, given is a diagram which illustrates the life cycle of the silkworm and the quantity of stages in which silk uh, cloth is produced. Um, okay, grammatically everything is fine here. I just think that um, the you shouldn't concentrate on the quantity of stages, but just the stages. Um, you don't uh, because the quantity is not so essential, so that's why um, it's, it's not a matter of principles. Okay, if there are any other introductions, you can also copy them <clears throat> at any other time during this live stream. Um, and uh, I will give you my feedback. So if, you, if there is some delay, if you watch it a bit later, then uh, you, can, um, you can do it at any time. Okay, um, so I will show you my introduction a little bit later and we'll move on to overview. Although some of you might still be writing an introduction, but and feel free to to copy it at any time uh, during the live stream today. So uh, the next thing that we need to do is to write an overview. Uh, well, some some um, people write overview at the end, uh, but personally, I prefer to write the overview right after the introduction. Um, so if you do not write an overview in academic writing task one, then you limit yourself to band five in task achievement. 
uh, because you don't summarize. Our task is always summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So generally, when you uh, give an overview for a, for a process, what you need to do is, um, well, you can start with a linking word, either overall or in general. And then there can be some introductory phrase, although it's also optional. It can be seen that the process consists of blah, blah, blah stages beginning with blah, blah, blah and ending with blah, blah, blah. So you just need to say how many stages there are and what's the first stage and what's the last stage. However, in our process today, there are two groups, two groups of stages, and you, you need to describe uh, both of them. So you need to give an overview for both of them uh, somehow, not necessarily in the way that I'm offering uh, now. And so for the introductory phrases, you can say it can be seen that, but you can also say it is conspicuous that, or it is abundantly clear that, or you can use a cleft sentence and say, what stands out from the diagram is that, or you can say it's glar glaringly obvious, or it's patently obvious, blindingly obvious, or it becomes immediately apparent that, or my favorite phrase, a cursory glance at the diagram reveals that, and then you can say the process consists, but my recommendation is the process being considered and you can say consists of, but it's better to say comprises or, which is the same, you can also say is comprised of. Now, many uh, people, even native speakers, they say comprises and after this they say of. Um, but this is grammatically not correct. Oxford and Cambridge Dictionary, if you read the word comprise, they will say that although some native speakers say comprises of, but this is not correct. You need to say comprises 15 stages. To be on the safe side, your examiner isn't going to look um, look this up in the dictionary. Um, you can just use the passive one, is comprised of, and that will be fine. So our 15 stages, um, beginning with and ending with, but well, you need to use advanced and common lexical items. So you can say commencing with instead of beginning and culminating with instead of ending. All right, let me have a look at the chat box. Okay, there are, I don't see any other overviews, uh, but if anybody wants to, <coughs> or I mean introductions, if anybody wants to write an introduction and um, you want to receive my feedback, please do it. Um, so now what we need to do um, is we need to write an overview, uh, an overview. So overall, and you can say, oh, it can be seen that or whatever you want. The process consists of how many stages? So how many stages are there? Beginning with what stage and ending with what stage? So here is um, the process itself. And you can see that there are two phases, let's say two groups of stages, uh, namely uh, life cycle of silkworm and production of silk cloth. Um, all right, so I'll give you two more minutes and please try to write an overview for this process. Uh, you only need to say how many stages there are in beginning with what stage and ending with what stage or some really, really essential things that uh, help you summarize this diagram. And after this, I will show you my introduction and my overview that I wrote a year ago. Okay, two minutes. Okay, George, um, the given diagram gives the notion of the silkworm cycle and the phases of production of silk, war, silk cloth. I would say the phases of the production of silk cloth. So I would just use an article, but apart from that, everything seems perfect to me. Okay, there is one minute left. We're writing an overview. Uh, okay, Alexander, but you need to say how many, oh, uh, you need to say how many steps there are you need to count them and really say how many stages there are. Um, and there's that's not only the production of silk cloth because there is also um, the stages and the 
life cycle of a silkworm as well. So you only described half uh, of the process. You gave an overview just for just uh, for half of the stages only. But your language is correct. I would also say commencing with, not from. Oh, okay, okay. I'll try, I'll try to do something about it. Let's say if I zoom it in for you, okay, I'll, I'll just zoom in and first you can have a look at the beginning at the at this first uh, phase and after this you can also look at the second I think you can also uh, change the quality of the video in your settings and uh, choose HD, for example. Okay, so uh, if anyone wants to add um, more examples of uh, your overviews, please, please feel free to do that. I'm going to show you my example of um, overview and introduction. So also um, when you if you if you decide to write this description, before writing this description, you can also um, read uh, read an article and uh, watch a video about how silkworm um, lives and how silk cloth is produced. Okay, I'll just I'll just copy these links for you. So here's the video that you can watch later, uh, or maybe we'll watch it even together now. Um, and also the articles, and they can help you find good good words, good expressions to describe um, the stages. So my introduction is. Given are the diagrams depicting the stages and the life of a silkworm, as well as the steps involved in manufacturing silk fabric. Overall, it is glaringly obvious that while the life cycle of the silkworm comprises four main stages from eggs to adult moths, the silk material production process involves six key stages from silkworm cocoon to silk material. Okay, so th th that's my example. And uh, after this, uh, we need to describe um, uh, the main stages of the process. Uh, so then they say firstly or initially or uh, first of all uh, and so on. Um, and then you start describing those uh, stages. So for this we'll need two ingredients. One of them, one of the groups of ingredients are sequencers. So um, what are some words that you could use to describe the, the very first stage? Like firstly, what are some synonyms for the word firstly, for example? Okay, well, you're typing, you will see my, uh, my answers uh, later. So anyway, um, I'll show you my, the options that I can offer. So um, these words are the first step or the first stage is, uh, first of all, or initially, First and foremost, to begin with, to commence with, and um, in the initial stage. So um, the best ones, in my opinion, are initially and to commence with. But if you use commencing with in your um, overview, <coughs> then probably you can start with initially. Okay, let's look at in the chat box. 
yeah, in the first stage, in the first step. Okay, Alexander, yes, you can say that. Now, um, what are some synonyms for the word next or after that? So uh, you, you will need words that mean next or after that. What are some, some of the possible synonyms? Okay, I will show you my examples. Um, you can use words like firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, then next after that, subsequently, moving further, henceforth, in the next step, in the following step, in the subsequent step, in the next stage, in the following stage, in the subsequent stage, then hereafter or afterwards. Okay, these are some words for uh, so some, some words that are possible when I describe the next stage. However, it's not a very good idea to describe every stage separate and say next, something is done. After that, something is done. Subsequently, something else is done. Because then your sentences will be simple. It's better to combine two or even three stages together and form uh, complex sentences, which we'll describe in a, uh, in a minute. Okay, so following. Um, I would say following this. Uh, following the following period of production, okay, in the next stage. All right, good. But sometimes there are 15 stages, so you need like more than two or three words, maybe five or 10. That's a good number. Um, so uh, what, what do you call uh, the stage before the last? There is a very good, clever adjective uh, that can be used to describe the stage, not the last stage, but the one before the last. Does anybody know this word? If you know, please. Uh, type it in the chat box. And also, uh, what's a good word for the last stage? Or what's a good linking word for the last stage? Okay, so the words are in the penultimate stage. Or you can also say prior to the last stage or the last stage but one. Um, and the word for the last stage is eventually. You can also say finally or in the last stage, not at, there's a mistake. All right. Now, uh, we also need to be able to use some uh, constructions. And you can also say after some kind of stage, once something has been done, this is followed by doing something. Having been done, the process continues with two steps involving doing something. Um, and you can also use some passive structures. Of course, the most natural way, but it's also the easiest way, is to use present simple passive. Something is done. But apart from that, you can also use present perfect passive. Once something has been done, something else is done. Then you can also use uh, passive infinitive. So for example, the cocoons are ready to be boiled. Yeah, to be boiled will be passive infinitive. Don't expect much because um, this range of passive constructions will take you up to band six, but it's also necessary to do that because what takes you to band seven and higher are complex sentences, which we'll also discuss in a minute. But uh, well, uh, talking about passive constructions, you can also use modal passive, like uh, something has to be done, can be done, should be done, ought to be done, and so on. Then, for example, you can also use passive gerund, like after being done, while being done. Uh, per, uh, perfect passive participle, having been done, or having done something, something else, somebody does something else. And yes, don't forget about relative clauses. So, uh, sorry, uh, complex sentences uh, in general. Um, the most natural ones that you can use in um, process description are, well, actually clauses of time. Yeah, because you say once something is done, something else is done. After something is done, something else is done. Before something is done, something else is done. As soon as something is done, something else is done. And then you can also use relative clauses like that which clauses of concession. So while the process of um, uh, silkworm production comprises this number of stages, the, the, pro the process of 
of the cycle of the uh, silkworm, the life cycle of silkworm consists of this number of stages. So they can have some contrast. And then also clauses of plays. So these are four types of complex sentences that um, you can use quite naturally uh, in process descriptions. There is also an, uh, a possibility for you to use inversion. Okay, inversion, this is when you use a verb before the subject and the word order is like in a question. <coughs> so in a process, how you can, how you can use um, inversion is, for example, you take one stage um, after without which the next stage is impossible. And you will say, and only after that is something done. Yeah, so not something is done, but is something done. And you will have an inversion. So a, a good way to uh, use inversion in a process is like, say, only after that. Um, all right, so now, okay, let me have a look in the chat box. If there are any questions or commentaries, please feel free to write them. Uh, now I'm going to show you my description of this process, which I wrote a year ago. Um, yeah, well, first of all, there are some words that will be useful for you. And I encourage everyone to, to write this uh, process description. And if you like it, you can post uh, your sample in the commentaries. Uh, and within within the following week after this until next monday if you post your writing in uh like this the description of this particular process uh in the commentaries now i will give you my feedback uh, and i will just write the correct uh, corrected version or improved version or alternative version of how of how this can be um expressed according to um according to my uh well still stylistic preferences so um silkworm uh, sometimes it's called bombix, but that's a Latin term. So, well, the, the chances are not very high that he'll have the same task, so it's not worth memorizing. But to produce a synonym is to manufacture sericulture silkworm, silkworm breeding. That's that's a good word to, to use um, in this process description. To lay eggs, weave, wove, woven, yeah, or unwind, unwound, unwound. These are two regular verbs. Larva, and in plural, it's larvae, to hatch, to feed on leaves. Mulberry tree, to emerge from the cocoon. Strand, like several, several strands of thread. And you'll be able to see them um, here, for example. Yeah, there, there, there's thread and there are several, um, se several threads, yeah? Several strands of threads. Um, then filament, or it's a good synonym for thread that you can use. Well, throughout your process description, you can say silk fabric, silk cloth, silk material, yarn. That's a good word. Um, OK, so we already looked at the introduction and the overview. And now, so the, here's the process description itself. Initially, a female moth lays its eggs. Following this, approximately 10 days later, the eggs hatch and the larvae start feeding on mulberry leaves. This stage last, lasts for four to six weeks until the larvae become covered in silk thread, which subsequently takes from three to eight days for a full cocoon to be incubated. Eventually, under natural conditions, having emerged from the cocoon, the moth repeats the cycle. Having said that, in order for the silk to be produced, the sericulture process described above ought to be interrupted at the penultimate stage. Once the worms start pupating in their cocoons, these are dissolved in boiling water in order for individual fibers of 300 to 900 meters long to be extracted with several strands of the obtained thread being afterwards twisted together. The resultant filament of yarn, filaments of yarn are then either dyed or woven into silk fabric. All right, so this is my uh, process description. Now, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write them in the chat box. Um, and if there are no more questions, then thank you for participation. Once again, um, if anyone wants to write the description of this process uh, and post it in the commentaries to this video, please don't send it to my email. Um, so you can you can post the description of this process uh, here under the uh, under the video, and I'll give you my feedback. So if you do this within the following week until next Monday,
Okay.